carbs. Mmm, carbs. Carbs are delicious. We crave them. We want them. We need them. Specifically, we need them for fuel. Sugar is a great example of using carbohydrates for fuel. Every five-year-old knows this after eating a plate full of sweets and running around the house annoying her parents. Carbs are also important as building blocks for other organisms. Plants use carbohydrates as their fundamental building material. Well, think of a tree. Nearly everything that you're looking at is, in fact, a carbohydrate. Wood is chucky jam full of carbohydrates, and trees are almost all wood. So exactly what are carbohydrates? Carbs are defined as sugars and polymers of sugars. Remember that polymers are nothing more than chains of smaller molecules linked together. Sugars are the simplest carbohydrates, and starches are long polymers of sugars. But we'll discuss those more in depth in a little bit. Well, I guess we should start at the beginning. Monosaccharides are the simplest carbohydrates that we know. We know them as sugars, and boy do they taste delicious. These are the fuel that all organisms use to do the work of life. They're also used as the raw material that the cell uses to construct amino acids and other fatty acids. Okay, there are several different types of sugars. You may have heard of them. We have glucose, fructose, and even lactose. They all end in os. These are the simplest sugars, which collectively are known as monosaccharides. All of them have some form of carbon, two hydrogen, and an oxygen. For example, glucose and fructose both have a molecular formula of C6H12O6. Well, you might think, why are there two different names for something with the same molecular formula? Well, if you look at the structural formula, you will see that they have different shapes. And those shapes cause them to behave different in a chemical sense. If you look at the graph on the lower left hand of this slide, it shows the sweetness of all monosaccharides. Fructose is on the bottom, and it has the highest sweetness of all, of all the sugars. Whereas glucose is right in the middle. It is less than half as sweet as fructose. So you can see that in a chemical shape, has very important effects on chemical reactions. Disaccharides are two monosaccharides combined by a covalent bond, known as a glycosidic linkage. Sucrose is the classic example of a disaccharide. It is made up when a glucose molecule bonds with a fructose molecule and forms a glycosidic linkage between them, and also a water molecule. Polysaccharides are just what they sound like, a chain of many monosaccharides. In fact, they are polymers that are formed by hundreds of thousands of monosaccharides linked together by glycosidic linkages. So what is the function of all these monosaccharides linking with each other? Simple sugars can be broken down into carbon dioxide and water in the process that we'll learn a lot more about later called cellular respiration. That's how most organisms do work to carry out life's function. So if simple sugars can do that, imagine what chains of those sugars can do. They serve as storage facilities for future energy. It's like putting gas into your gas tank in order to use it later. Plants' main storage molecule is starches, which are polysaccharides, and they are delicious. French fries, French bread, and French toast are all made of starch, which is a polysaccharide. Polysaccharides can also form structural functions. Wood is a prime example of this. Wood is formed by many hundreds of thousands of monosaccharides linked together. These come to dominate nearly all of the space of a cell, then that cell dies and leaves the skeleton of the carbohydrate, starch. In animals, we store energy as a different type of polysaccharide, known as glycogen. Glycogen gets converted to glucose, which our bodies can then use to go through cellular respiration in order to go through all of life's functions. And it takes about 24 hours for glycogen to be converted to glucose. There are two types of structural polysaccharides. Cellulose is the polysaccharide that we know as wood. But it also exists in non-woody plants in the cell walls, and it serves the function of giving plants their rigid structure. This allows them to develop an upright growth form. Animals also produce a different structural polysaccharide known as chitin. We have it in us in the form of hair and fingernails, 
And that hair and those fingernails are chemically identical to the exoskeletons of insects, which are also made of chitin. So why are carbohydrates so important? They're important because they provide the fuel for all life to do the work that requires to go through all of its functions. This process is known as ATP synthase. We'll learn about the details of this process in future lectures, but here I'll, I'll tell you about the big picture. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and this is the real fuel of a cell. However, carbohydrates is what fuels ATP. In ATP synthesis, carbon and hydrogen bonds in sugars break apart. The energy from this chemical reaction produces energy which ADP, or adenine diphosphate, combines with another phosphate in order to produce ATP. That ATP can move around the cell with a high amount of potential energy. This can be converted to kinetic energy to do the work of a cell.